Look at that, we have made it to the semi-finals. Round 4, Battle 1, or Battle 29 overall. We're getting so close to the end here. This will be the first battle that is going to decide one of our finalists. This is coming off of their Round 3 victories, so they're already brewed up and ready to go. Today we have what I think is going to be an extremely exciting battle. We have the Macha Akatsuki, which has shocked and surprised and amazed me every step of the way, up against the Hikari from Breakaway Matcha based on the cultivar that originally opened my eyes to premium matchas, and this particular expression of that cultivar has fought its way all the way into the semifinals. I feel like they're going to be quite distinct, but also very strong contenders, so it'll be exciting to try and figure out who's going to go into the finals today. With that preamble out of the way, let's Refresh the mind and palate here. The Akatsuki first. Just smells so sweet. Yeah, that cereally note. It's just so pleasant. It's sweet, kind of toasted barley or oats. Or, no, not oats. But more towards barley or wheat, maybe. But then there is that traditional kind of umami, green, light pea, a little bit of baby spinach. It's just so good. Up against Hikari now. Ah. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be a tough one. Really tough. Also, sweetness, but there's not quite... There is a little bit of that kind of browner notes that I had mentioned just its last battle in round three. Some of those darker notes that weren't quite leaning towards the cereal notes, but when right, right, right next to one that I strongly get a cereal note, it tastes closer to kind of that almost caramelly, malty... Man, I know I have to pick one, but it's so tough. And they're just... The, the smoothest, no bitterness, no astringency from either. Super sweet. Man, this Akatsuki is just vegetal, but sweet. And that sounds maybe like it wouldn't go together. Like, you have to think vegetal sweetness, like the green peas or young asparagus. Don't think, like, sugar on zucchini. That's That just doesn't, that doesn't even sound appetizing. But that sweet greenness, a little bit of malty, caramelly, toasted cereal notes. <laughs> They're so evenly matched. They're also remarkably close in flavor. Like I know I talk more about the cereal notes in the Akatsuki, but there is still that kind of warm note in the Hikari. I'm not even really leaning one way or the other at this point. All right, I'm gonna have to just finish them both, sit with them for a minute, and then try and come up with a winner. Let's try it. There's just a little bit of tingling happening on my tongue with the Akatsuki. Just a little little bit on the top, on the sides. Still not not even the slightest trace of bitterness. Lasting, mellow, it was super creamy. All right, let's try the Hikari from Breakaway Matcha now. Okay, I've been sitting here. Same thing, there's no, no discernible bitterness, astringency. It's got a complex flavor profile going on. You really can't say anything bad about either offering. So, very tough battle, but I think I'm gonna have to give the nod to the Akatsuki. This is what I really like about this format, is getting to this level, right? The even round three, especially here in these semi-final battles, where it's just super excellent matcha. They just can't go wrong with either one. If you had the opportunity to have any of these matchas, you would be blown away by how delicious they are. And so now it's trying to find that ultimate pinnacle amazingness for me, just slightly edging it out in this semi-final battle, moving into the finals. Matcha Akatsuki, well done. Our nearly complete bracket now looks like this. And I can tell you now a little bit more about the Hikari from Breakaway Matcha. So this, again, is one of their ultra-premium offerings in that top four out of their 12. For their 30-gram container, you're going to be paying $169, or approximately $5.63 per gram. Season cultivar. Now, it doesn't mention that this is a single cultivar. It's called Hikari Blend, right? So... On the, the label and everything, it says Hikari Blend. It doesn't mention that it's single cultivar Uji Hikari anywhere. So I don't know what, what that means exactly. It doesn't mention that it is a single cultivar. It does have the word blend right on the label. Is it a Uji Hikari dominant blend? Or is it a blend of multiple Uji Hikari single cultivar but multiple estates? I really don't know the details on that. We have to assume that at least there's a predominance of the Uji Hikari cultivar in this offering. Um, the origin, so this is interesting, this is near the Byodoen Temple in Uji, Kyoto, Japan. 
So I like that it's near the temple. And then the description from the website, matcha of this extreme quality is exceedingly hard to both produce and to procure. Yet here it is, thanks to an obsessed grower who offered it to us. This matcha is pure pleasure. It's like drinking light infused with chlorophyll. It bestows a brothy umami torrent that continues long after swallowing, up to several full minutes of finish. And its ultra fine texture and overall quality means that it whisks up into gorgeous thick clouds of emerald froth that remain in the bowl long after the liquid is gone. Dominant aromas are freshly picked young peas, shiitake, and sweet cream. Silky as it gets. Its high levels of L-theanine and other amino acids snap the brain to attention, making it the perfect beverage for prolonged bouts of study, writing, or any other intellectual pursuit. From a truly talented matcha farmer. Very limited quantities available. It's certainly worth picking up even just the 4 gram flight to try it once. It is exceptionally good, but in this narrow win, it did fall out to the Akatsuki, which we will see in the finals. And I will see you tomorrow for our last semi-final battle. See you then.